So tonight, Matthew, Scarlowy is going to be. Scarlowy? Wait, what? Hi, guys. We will get to the Scarlowy to Scarlowy conversion in a bit, but first, let's build the wagon and van. The brake van has been modelled with a door open as per the illustration. The only parts I've added are the door handrail and the interior floor. Oh, and I noticed in the Audrey books that the brake van, Cora, has bars on the windows, so I put those on as well. The wagon has been built as per the kit, so both are ready for painting. My usual technique is applied here with cotton buds being glued onto the underside of the models to give me something to hold onto. I used to use great car primer for priming, but my local automobile shop has changed their make and the new one's terrible for models. So now I spray Humbrol acrylic primer through the airbrush. It's not an issue, it just takes more time due to setting up and cleaning the airbrush after. So the main Scarlowy livery of blue is going on the van. The colour changes between the pictures, but I've gone for a mid-blue called Azure Blue by DecoArt. This isn't too bright nor too dark. I really like blue for a livery actually. I'm always tempted to model the Fairborn. Maybe one day. The wagon is sprayed with the usual earth brown. and dry brushed in the usual light antique white. Before being masked off, as the wagon in the book appears to have a black underbrake. The van is also masked off for the same thing. The black is just a standard black primer. I just make sure to hit the model from different angles, especially around the buffers as it's really easy to miss a corner. As I'm aiming for Scarlowy realness, the rolling stock is to be weathered. So out comes the black paint that appears to stress viewers out. And yes, it stresses me out every time I do it. The wagon gets the same treatment, and clean water is wiped over the models to clean the black off. I've actually painted this wagon in reverse, doing the weathering first and then painting the ironwork after. This is because I forgot to varnish the model, and the water stage leaves the need to repaint parts back on. It's the same paint, so it doesn't really make a difference to the final model. The brake lever is now glued on and painted black. Finally, rust pigment is added to various parts. And a white pigment to the interior, just to give a bit of life to the model. I've also made some wooden planks to fit inside the wagon as per the picture. Moving over to the van, and the black detail has been added, so it's time to move on to the step, which is earth brown. I keep quite a tight palette for these models, it helps with the final look. The interior of the van is just painted with a random grey. You won't really see it once the figures are in, but it's nice to spend some time to do this in case someone does have a nosy inside. The window glass is now glued in. These are just little off cuts of clear plastic sheet, attached with glue and glaze by Deluxe Materials. Really good product and dries super clear.
the roof is now added. Again, if you want to see the roof being made, go watch my video built in the chorus break band for the chorus layout. After this one, not right now, that would be mental, and it ruins my analytics, so don't do that. Oh look, I've also added the SR lettering on the break band. I didn't actually film this, but it's just little water slide decals. Well, I did, but my hand was in the way of the film. So the wagon and the van are done. And here's Scarlowy, made by Bachman and ready to run. One issue though, it's finished as Scarlowy from the TV programme, not the original books. And that would never suit his grace. Leave a like if you got that reference. I'll strip it down to its basic parts. This is really easy on this model, just a few screws from below, one from the inside to release the cab. That's about it. I just make sure to keep all the bits in a tub so I don't lose any screws. And unlike the Chorus tattoo I built a few weeks ago, go watch that video if you haven't seen it, Scarlowy has black wheels so I don't need to do much to the chassis. I just brush some matte black to dull it down a bit. Be really careful around the pickups on this as they're so fragile. Time to deface this bad boy. A knife slipped behind the face is enough to pop it off. The body needs a few modifications, starting with filing back the tiny handrails. There's one either side of the tank, and one on the front of the smoke box. This one is a bit tricky to file due to being so close to the chimney base. The main battle on this part is removing the second coal bunker, and I've chosen to go for the Dremel with a small filing tip. This did take some time, but it was easy to control. Right, moving on to the cab, and the only thing I'll do is to cut off the little lamp. And file its move. I'll add a 3D printed one later. The foot plate needs a lot of modifying. Starting with removing the second sandbox from the front. There he goes. And this is slightly fouled back as well. The main work is on the sides as Tal Finn, sorry, Scarlowy, from his era, didn't have full running boards. So these are cut off for the Dremel. I don't take it all away to leave some support for the body when it's put back together. Whilst we're on the footplate, the hole left by the sandbox has a thin piece of plastic glued from below to prepare for filling in later. Holes are drilled in the tank for the new handrails. It's easy to get the holes level as you can see where the original castings were. So it's best to do it now before we strip the paint. The smoke box handrail holes are also drilled through. On to strip in the paint. The main body is cast metal, so I'm using a proper paint stripper. It acts really fast and you can see the black coming away almost instantly. The red follows in a few minutes. I give it five minutes and then scrub it with a rough brush to loosen the last bits. The plastic pieces are stripped using a bath of Dettol. The parts need to be left in this for about 40 minutes and then scrubbed with an old toothbrush. When it's all washed with water and dry, the sandbox hole is filled using modelling filler and sanded flush with the rest of the footplate. The same goes for the second coal bunker. Oh look, there's one of the assistants. That's right folks, don't assume I have a nice peaceful workplace with soothing music while I film these. I'll be holding the back with my foot listening to sodding Pepper Pig. The parts are ready for painting so they all get cotton buds glued on. 
Oh, sorry, but the face isn't going back on. I've got a replacement smoke box door by CW Railways. It was only a couple of pounds and looked spot on. He got it sent out super quick as well, which was ideal for this project. Time is of the essence. The parts get a shot of grey primer and then onto the main livery of choice. Like the van, the engine's livery in the book seems to change. And I eventually settled with Army Painter's pure red. Hopefully you'll agree that this looks pretty close. The paint gives really good thin coats, so I went over the model twice to get a solid colour. Everything else now will be hand painted, and I started with the dome, which is painted using greedy gold. Again, two coats seems to be about right, with no sign of the red showing through. Whilst the gold was out, I went over the window spectacles. These protrude on a model which makes it nice and easy to get a tidy finish. The cylinders have both ends painted black. In the book they don't even seem to have lining on them, so this is work done for them on this model. The smoke box is now painted black. The coal load is also painted black, but I'll probably top this up with real coal later. The cab interior is split cream and black, so the bottom is painted now. Everything on the footplate, apart from the sandbox and buffer beams, is also painted black. And the upper cab is painted green. to the most difficult part of this build, the lining. I'm using blue water slide lining, and usually I get on really well with it, but I've had this blue for years now, and it's got so frail, so it just kept ripping. But I managed to get it on with plenty of water on the surface to let it slide about, adjusting it with a cocktail stick, then absorbing the water away with a cotton bud. The lettering for the Scarlowy name is from Fox Transfers, and each letter is individually cut out and applied. It does take a bit of time to get them all level and equally spaced, but that's the advantage of water slide decals. You can keep moving them until you're happy. I also kept the rear number plate. So I've painted that black and added a number one from the Fox Transfer set. The chimney band is painted with greedy gold to match the dome. And the lamp rack is black. So now we need to make the new handrails. And I've bought some knobs from Alan Gibson. But these are the long version, I didn't notice that at the time. So I've cut them in half for this model. These are glued into the holes we drilled earlier. Thin wire is now threaded through the holes in the knobs, and a drop of super glue keeps them in place. The needle tip pliers really help for jobs like this. The lining needs to be sealed in, so the model is sprayed with a matte varnish. When that's dry, the window glazing can go off, and it's the same method as the lamp. The 
the model is then rebuilt. And I didn't lose any screws, so that's good. And the last details are added, such as the whistle and buffers. And these just push in. Ah yes, the black wash, out for another victim. I didn't really want the same finish as on the chorus tan too, so I went with a slightly different technique. Right, look here. The paint is applied in the same way, and some water is used to wash off most of the black after. However, I had to go at manipulating the finish using cotton buds to try and get the look of a worked engine with the crew given just a two minute clean with a cloth before job started. I really like it and it gives streaking marks down the sides which looks really nice. So there we go, Roland stocked up and ready for work. Obviously this is a normal working diorama, but the Roland stock can be used on other layouts. So maybe this isn't the end of modelling the SR. Well, I mean, it isn't because we still want the figures to populate the scene, but you know what I mean. Ah oh yes, here's some more of my videos, right on time. Cheers.